Hi, I'm Ren Butler. In this article, I will present the key elements of the Mayan macro astrology and what it may say about our time. I will also look back at many important events in human archaeological history and show the correlations with the key moments in the Mayan sequence. Early in 2012, Stanislav Grof, MD, PhD, wrote a remarkable article on the Mayan macro astrology entitled 2012 and Human Destiny, End of the World or Consciousness Revolution. The piece circulated modestly online that year, and I was intrigued by the ideas it raised. Several years later, the cataclysmic events surrounding the attempted insurrection of outgoing President Donald Trump and a violent group of his followers struck me as a remarkable parallel with key elements of the Mayan predictions about 2012. In the immensely long time frame of macroastrology, I believe that Trump's election in 2016, just four years after 2012, is an extremely close correlation with the Mayan vision of this time. Let us begin with a review of the profound astronomy of the Maya and Groff's understanding of its significance during this important moment in human history. Groff writes that public awareness concerning the 25,772-year cycle of the Mayan Long Count calendar and its end at sunrise on December 21, 2012, was engaged by a number of publications, including Jose Arguelles' The Mayan Factor, 1987, John Major Jenkins' Maya Cosmogenesis, 2012 and 1998, and Terence and Dennis McKenna's The Invisible Landscape, 1976. Many other books, articles, and even a movie of the time publicized this upcoming event. Groff then offers a crucial insight that the widespread view of the Mayan prophecy as predicting destruction of the world and of humanity is a serious misunderstanding. In much the same way, many fundamentalist Christians see the term apocalypse as signifying worldwide destruction. The original meaning of the term apocalypse is not actually destruction, but lifting of the veil or revelation, the disclosure of secret knowledge that had previously been hidden. Groff sets forth a more optimistic interpretation of the Maya prophecy. It refers to the end of the world as we have known it, a world dominated by unbridled violence and insatiable greed, egotistic hierarchy of values, corrupted institutions and corporations, and irreconcilable conflicts between organized religions. Groff suggests that rather than predicting a destruction of the physical world, the Mayan prophecy refers to a process of death and rebirth in the human psyche, leading to emotional and spiritual transformation. Before we continue, I want to acknowledge the profound contribution that the Maya have made to world culture through their astronomy, mathematics, and mystical understanding of the world, gifts which I believe will be recognized more dramatically as the implications of their 2012 writings continue to unfold. The Maya people still live and thrive in what is now Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Sometime in the first century BC, Mayan astronomers observed that the position of the winter solstice sun was moving slowly toward an alignment with the center of the Milky Way galaxy, a dark vertical band which we refer to as the galactic rift. This movement is a result of a slow but inexorable wobble of the rotational axis of the Earth, which causes the position of the winter solstice sun to pass backward through the 12 signs of the zodiac over a period of 25,772 years. This process also rotates the position of the spring equinox sun through the 12 signs, leading to what is often referred to in traditional astrology as the age of Pisces, age of Aquarius, and so forth. These zodiacal ages last approximately 2,147.67 years. This movement is referred to as precession. The Mayans viewed the winter solstice sun as the archetypal cosmic father and the center of the galaxy as the creative destructive womb of the cosmic mother. They saw the alignment of the winter solstice sun with the center of the galaxy, or more accurately, the vertical galactic equator, as a sacred marriage of the divine masculine and feminine principles. This event would coincide with a period of both great danger and also large-scale enlightenment of humanity. The essence of this presentation is that the Mayan predictions about the year 2012 
were not just about the year 2012, but there was an operative range on both sides of the exact alignment. And we will talk about how many years on each side that might be. As I said, Groff emphasizes a crucial understanding of archetypal cosmology, that astrological alignments are not momentary events, but rather display a range or orb on either side of the exact transit, in which the transit is observed to be operative and potent. Due to precession, the position of the Earth's solstices and equinoxes move one degree of the 360-degree ecliptic circle every 71.59 years. Because the sun is just over half a degree wide, 0.53 degrees, and the galactic rift about 1.5 degrees wide, we would expect the influence of the solar galactic alignment to be operative for, at the very least, several decades and possibly much longer. Also intrigued by the powerful events surrounding Donald Trump's presidency and its divisive aftermath, Groff recently raised the provocative question, what is the operative orb of distance and time on either side of the exact solar galactic conjunction of 2012? I would like to propose a hypothesis for what these orbs might be. As we have seen, the Mayan astronomers were looking at the winter solstice sun's passage onto the galactic equator, a line which runs vertically along the center of the galactic rift. The narrowest orb we might postulate on either side of the exact alignment of 2012 would be the period in which the solstice sun falls completely within the 1.5 degree band of space which encompasses the point of the galactic center, a passage which takes approximately 69.4 years. This gives us 34.7 years on either side of 2012 for the complete passage of the solstice sun across the rift which spans the years 1978-2047. We could say that this is the period of the exact conjunction. Just two years after 1978, in 1980, Ronald Reagan was elected President of the United States and began a massive buildup of the U.S. nuclear arsenal, leading to worldwide apocalyptic fears of nuclear holocaust and nuclear winter. This alarming period contributed to a determined feeling among many people around the world that humanity would need to fundamentally evolve or face certain annihilation. The years 1978 and 2012 also coincide with the presidencies of Jimmy Carter, 1976 to 1980, and Barack Obama, 2008 to 2016, by all accounts two of the most unusually idealistic presidents. Interestingly, during the year 2047, i.e. 34.7 years after the exact precession conjunction of December 2012, we will be in the middle of a powerful world transit of Uranus opposition Pluto. Richard Tarnas, in his book Cosmos and Psyche, documents the dramatic surges in evolutionary, ecological, democratic, and civil rights breakthroughs that frequently occur during these transits. The coming opposition of 2043 to 2052 is sure to be an unusually pronounced decade in the awakening process of Homo sapiens, just as the Uranus-Pluto conjunction was during the 1960s and early 1970s. The rapid spread of technologies of the sacred, such as psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy, Groffian breathwork approaches, and other modalities for accessing non-ordinary states of consciousness, is a very promising development. If their responsible use continues, the evolutionary forces associated with the coming Uranus-Pluto opposition of the mid-century, as well as the many world transits in the interim, are likely to manifest as dramatic personal healing and awakenings in consciousness for many people around the world. However, if the fearful and reactionary side of human nature holds on too tightly, this awakening process could inevitably become more chaotic in nature. An example of this in the United States would be if a state legislature nullified the results of a federal election it did not agree with. The resulting erosion of democracy would likely have a very destructive effect on the morale and cohesion of the United States, disrupting the ecological and societal progress that is trying to occur. Regardless, it is almost certain that many people will have dramatic breakthroughs in their inner healing sessions during the coming decades.
to return to our discussion of Donald Trump, especially fascinating in Groff's article is his account of the Maya prophecy in which the hero twins Hunapu yeah. and Shibalenke must battle a demonic figure known as Seven Macaw. He is described as a vain, selfish, and impulsive ruler who represents the ego archetype that is dominant at the end of the cycle. Seven Macaw seems to have an archetypal parallel in the New Testament, the end-time ruler or the beast, also known as Antichrist. For many, the seditious and dictatorial actions of the former president in his attempts to undermine the democratic process and hold on to power at all costs by disseminating dangerous lies about the lost election is a remarkable synchronicity. For me, of all the grievous behaviors and abuses of the former president, the one that offends me the most is his callous disregard for ecological values. While in power, his administration rescinded over 100 crucial environmental protection regulations. We may never be able to quantify the damage of his ill-informed environmental policies to our air and water quality, even as the lost progress on curbing greenhouse gas emissions during his watch hurtles us toward climate catastrophe. For me, these actions reflect far more knowingly on Trump's actual concern for human life. The time of Trump and Trumpism will hopefully pass soon. As Groff continues the story, Hunapu and Shibalenke defeat Seven Macaw and strip him of his teeth, the instrument of violence, his riches, and his power. By doing this, they facilitate the resurrection of their father, one Hanapu, a just ruler who represents selfless divine consciousness that is holistic. This mindset shows concern for all beings and makes political decisions based on future generations, or as Native Americans say, with regard to how they will affect seven generations down the road. It will be interesting to see in hindsight which, if any, figures in American political life become associated archetypally with the hero twins of the Mayan codices. My original thought on this was Barack Obama and Joseph Biden. It was Obama's mocking of Trump's vicious birther conspiracy during the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2011 that apparently galvanized Trump to run for office. The sense of commanding moral and intellectual authority evident in the figure of President Obama evoked for some of the most extreme white supremacist sides of the American psyche and their distilled essence in Donald Trump. He revealed this ugly side fully before Biden shut him down commandingly with his decisive win in the 2020 election. Other possible nominations for the Hero Twins include President Biden and Vice President Harris, District Attorney from Georgia and New York, or perhaps most notably Republican House Representatives Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. These true leaders have shown admirable integrity in remaining faithful to their oaths to the United States Constitution and calling out Trump's big lie about the lost election. Yet the phenomenon of Trumpism did not emerge in isolation. Trump is a pure embodiment of a particular state of consciousness and worldview, one which is shared by many authoritarian leaders and dictators and their unwitting followers around the planet. Thus, perhaps the life-supporting impulses symbolized by the Maya story of the hero twin will manifest not only in the political realm, but in the emergence of a new cultural paradigm and state of consciousness. If so, then the groundbreaking research of Stanislav Grof and Richard Tarnas in unveiling important elements of a new holotropic worldview is deserving of mention. This would leave Biden and other democratically elected social and political leaders around the world to be embodiments of one Hunapu, the just and compassionate leader. Additionally, it is clear that the actions of so many U.S. state election officials and judges in upholding the integrity of the free and fair election of 2020 will go down in history as pivotal in preventing a catastrophic breakdown of American democracy. This heroic faith and loyalty was demonstrated by many Republicans, even Trump-appointed ones, though a large number of other senators and representatives failed in their duty. As Tarnas said in a personal email, the moral center held. We clearly face many serious and escalating societal and ecological challenges as a species. As Churchill said in 1942, after the Second Battle of El Alamein, now this is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning.
Of course, if Trump or another leader with totalitarian aspirations wins the 2024 U.S. election through unfair tactics by a state legislature, or their term is followed by illegal attempts to remain in power, then the evolutionary process could be derailed and delayed. Next level of penumbral orb of the winter solstice galactic rift conjunction that we are currently experiencing might then include the years in which the solstice sun has begun to touch the 1.5 degree segment of the rift on either side of the galactic center, but is not yet fully within it. This then spans the years 1940 to 2085 and could be called the period of the very close conjunction. In December of 1938, nuclear fission was discovered by Otto Frisch with crucial contributions from Lies Meitner in a lab in Berlin, Germany, a major step in the development of nuclear weapons. Nine months later, in September 1939, World War II began, the deadliest conflict in human history. It ended in 1945 when the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, followed shortly thereafter by the onset of the Cold War. The omnipresent danger of the nuclear era made it clear to many around the world that our present way of thinking and acting would have to fundamentally evolve or we might face dire consequences as a species. As Albert Einstein said in 1946, the unleashed power of the atom has changed everything save our modes of thinking, and we thus drift toward unparalleled catastrophe. The threat of nuclear annihilation, the memory of the horror of the world wars, the Holocaust and other mass genocides, and the escalating degradation of our air, water, and soil serve important roles in forcing us to look at the shadow side of human nature and attempt to stop repeating the mistakes of the past. These collective pressures help to drive the evolutionary healing process forward, both in individuals and in society. It is interesting that also in 1938, the year of the discovery of nuclear fission, Albert Hoffman first synthesized LSD-25, a substance which would go on to play a fundamental role in Groff's discovery of the expanded cartography of the psyche and the birth of transpersonal psychology. We can thus see compelling historical correlations for these two levels of orb surrounding the Mayan precession alignment, which was exact in 2012. Again, these two orb tiers span the years 1978 to 2047 and 1940 to 2085. We are clearly in a time of unprecedented technological and military development, with an ensuing equal need for an emotional and spiritual evolution of humanity. Our nuclear and petrochemical technologies have for the first time reached the point where we can destroy human civilization as well as many of the other species on Earth. This is the make or break moment for humanity. The fact that it corresponds to a prophecy made by Mayan astronomer astrologers more than 2,000 years ago is beyond impressive. Finally, I would like to suggest an additional or third penumbral orb that may encompass in a grand arc this most intense and dangerous period in our human history. In Cosmos and Psyche, Tarnas presents persuasive evidence for the potency of a 10 to 15 degree orb for world transit conjunctions, with an additional penumbral orb of up to 20 degrees, a hypothesis which he arrived at through decades of systematic observation. I believe it may therefore be plausible to suggest a similar range of orb for our current solstice-sun galactic equator conjunction described by the Mayan astronomers. The precession conjunction we are currently experiencing came within 15 degrees of orb around the year 938 AD. In 904 AD, gunpowder was first used for warfare in China in the form of incendiary projectiles, an event which changed the world forever. That year, the solstice sun was almost exactly on the 15-degree point of the precession conjunction, falling just one half of a degree outside of it, and certainly well within the wider 20-degree penumbral orb. Historians believe that gunpowder was discovered by accident in China around the year 850 AD, or possibly as early as 808 or even earlier. The discovery of gunpowder is thought to have occurred when Tang Dynasty alchemists seeking the elixir of immortality added saltpeter to charcoal and sulfur. 
the ensuing fire badly scorched their hands and faces, as well as burning down their home. Within a short time, gunpowder radically changed the art of war and became the deadliest weapon in the world's military arsenals until nuclear weapons were developed in the 20th century. The Chinese also invented the first fireworks during this period. My astrology colleague Ishel Lunar points out that at the time of the onset of the 15-degree orb, the heartland of the Maya civilization was also facing ecological and societal collapse, the end of the classic period. The use of gunpowder and fighting began an escalating arms race around the world, which continues to this day. By the time the precession conjunction had reached the 10-degree orb in the year 1296, gunpowder had spread to most parts of Eurasia. The 13th century also witnessed the founding of the Mongol Empire by Genghis Khan, which would soon become the largest contiguous empire of all time. The Chinese further went on to invent the earliest known rockets, landmines, and handguns during this period. With more emancipatory promise, the first wooden movable type printing was invented in China in 1298, in virtually exact coincidence with the onset of the 10 degree orb in 1296. In review, the three levels of orb I propose are the exact conjunction, 1978 to 2047, very close conjunction, 1940 to 2085, broad conjunction, 938 to 3086. The dramatic correlation between the first use of gunpowder in war and the solstice sun reaching the 15 degree point in its conjunction with the galactic equator, I believe, is compelling evidence for the hypothesis of applying Tarnus orbs on world transits to the longer cycles of Mayan macro astrology. What follows is my preliminary research in this new area of inquiry, which we might also refer to as the Mayan precessional astrology. In my next segment, we will look at earlier alignments and major archaeological events in human history.